It's another trip out, and today's video comes from Winston in North Lincolnshire, around 20 minutes away from my house, and Jane and Alan Scorer have kindly invited me to have a look around their amazing exotic garden. And when I say exotic garden, this garden's more than that. It's a real labour of love, and they've spent the past 40 years designing, planning, evolving it into the display that you'll see today. I think this will be a really interesting garden for a lot of you to see. Firstly, if you've just started growing the tropical style plants, you might want more plant ideas from how you can take the sort of standard list of plants, the Dixonia tree fern, the Ansetti bananas, cannas, and really try to create a naturalistic vibe or put some of your own personality into the garden. Alternatively, you might have a garden that's already got that natural look, maybe more of a cottage garden or a woodland garden, and you want to know some exotic plant ideas to really bring some drama, some vibrancy and colour into your garden. I think this has got some great examples of both. And if you enjoy my garden, if you enjoy seeing Chris's garden, then you'll enjoy seeing the plants in this one too. There's a lot of the Ansetti, the Tetrapanax, the Trecapas palms, but here they've been in the ground a lot longer than mine and some of them are really huge. You need to see them. What I'm going to do is firstly walk around this area here, the exotic jungle part of the garden, because I think some of the plants in here, it really is striking. And then we're going up to the sunnier end near the house, where there's just an amazing combination of plants. Sun-loving Aeoniums, we've got carnivorous plants up there, and there's all kinds of different impatiens, bulbs, everything. It really is a full-on display. You might know Jane and Allen's garden from Yorkshire Chris's video last year. I've come to the garden in mid-September. And I know traditionally September, it might feel like a bit of the beginning of the end for a lot of exotic gardens. It's that time when you look back on the summer and realise what's coming ahead. But personally, it's one of my favourite months of the year. It's a time when the tropical style plants, the exotics, they're really at the biggest and the best. A lot of them don't know that winter's coming and they're really just full of huge leaves and bright colours. And you've got that contrasted against the change of the seasons the low light, the yellowing leaves of the trees around. I just love that contrast. And for me, it's one of my favorite times of the year. So without any more talking, let's get on and I'll show you more of this amazing garden. I'm actually starting today's garden tour in the middle of the garden. And that's because there's some incredible examples of a lot of the exotics I've talked about in my videos and also grow myself. So here we've got a Gunra. This one I believe is Tinctoria rather than Manicata because if, as you'll see, the inflorescence is a lot more tightly packed than mine are. But nonetheless, it's still an incredible exotic plant. Look at those big green leaves. And I believe Tinctoria is probably a lot more adaptable and it'll grow with probably less water than Manicata. But behind it, I really need to show you this palm. This is the plain old Trachycapus fortunii. Very readily available, very easy to grow, very tough. But I just wanted to show you a cracking example and also to try to convey how big they get. Each leaf, including the stalk, is definitely either one and a half meters or maybe even pushing two meters in length, which gives the whole plant a wingspan of over four meters. And just look how tall they get. These are plants that are very easy to grow, but with a little bit of shelter from the strong winds, I think they look better. And this one here has definitely got some fantastic looking dark green leaves. It really is striking. I think this whole area really shows how you can create an exotic jungle. I mean, just look at the size of some of those cordylines over there. They're huge things towering up into the canopy. A lot of the plants in this part, they're not rarities. They're not very tender plants that are tough to grow. These are very, very hardy evergreen exotics. These are the backbone plants that you should create your garden with if you want a lower maintenance, but still definitely striking jungle garden. Here, we've got Cordyline Australis and another Trachycarpus fortunii. And in fact, I think it's a great tip if you're trying to create a jungle effect to repeat plants, to not necessarily have every plant being something different, a clash of colors. This part of the garden, it's definitely focused on the greens and these strong growing evergreen exotics. I mean, look at the size of this one. This is a Cordyline Australis. Again, very easy, very cheap, very readily available. And if you've got the foresight and enough patience to wait for it to get this big, I'll just show you how big that trunk is there. It really is a good size. They do grow relatively quickly. And I think it just shows in this day and age of massively increasing plant prices, you don't have to spend a huge amount to get a real striking specimen for your garden. 
these size up very quickly and whilst you might buy them as a small plant a spiky looking plant it will size up in time and pretty much create a full-on tree we have got mixed in here the tender plants so as we look around you'll see some at like this Zantadecia white giant or Hercules they are actually a lot tougher than you'd expect the bananas there the musabaju they do die down a bit in winter or at least the leaves go brown anyway but this plant here this is an Inseti ventricosum morellii you might have seen them in my garden I've done a few videos about them and I think really pound for pound they are one of the best summer tropical style plants you can buy big leaves amazing colors and even on an overcast evening I just think they look incredible and to me this is something that I've tried to create in my own garden the whole effect is really created with a strong structure of the tough exotics the trachycarpus the tree ferns the formiums and then you have a few summer plants to go in to really take it to the next level and on about next level this is a tetra panax i grow them myself and this is the look that i eventually want with mine to help create that towering canopy and again it's a plant you might buy it small but it won't be that many years before it gets a trunk like this and really starts reaching to the sky and i think they're actually a feature in this area they pop up everywhere so looking up here you can see just how big some of those leaves are now i know the plant at the moment is definitely the rex form of this but to be honest with you i do struggle to tell the difference between the forms and i'm not entirely sure a lot of the time it makes that much difference they all create these huge leaves they all add to that exotic vibe and a lot of them are strong growers if you've got a good plant it doesn't matter what the name is just enjoy growing it another Enseti there they've grown really well this year so there's a lot of plants in here that I talk about in my videos you've got the Shamrops or Chemrops or Camrops however you want to pronounce it a very adaptable but slow growing palm I think they're actually quite happy with a bit of shade they generally prefer a bit of sun but as you can see here it really fits in with that lush slightly shady vibe We've got a fatsia japonica there they definitely size up and really help create that jungle backdrop but as we head round you'll see there's interesting plants mixed in we've got hydrangeas there we've got brunnera over there and i think really what jane was saying to me earlier she does try to keep things exotic looking but she doesn't like restrict the plants that she grows if something's bright and colorful or it's got unusual foliage it goes in the garden and i think that's absolutely how it should be so i mean look in here we've got a really exotic a genuinely unusual and striking dixonia antarctica tree fern but then behind it we've got over here we've got honeysuckle growing up and over the trellis and down below we've got hostas we've got another hydrangea over there and we've got a lot of more familiar garden ferns so i think really it's about creating the garden that you want to create not every plant in your garden has to be a true exotic or tropical style plant to really convey that vibe and here just a few statement plants like that tree fern those towering cordylines and these amazing trachycarpus they definitely help transport you to somewhere else but we'll just have a little bit of a walk around this way this garden is full of twisty turny paths i don't know if you saw my video looking at yorkshire chris's garden last week he's got an amazing garden There's the path just zigzags through and here things are even more jungle like i just love the blend of planting and to me the trees really fit in we've got some very striking birches here and i know a lot of people ask me about the right kind of trees for an exotic garden yes there's definitely some really unusual evergreen trees and there's some deciduous ones that one straight in front of me is a great example paulonia that grow rapidly have huge leaves but i do think you've got to plan ahead and having any kind of tree in an exotic garden definitely helps gives it that jungly vibe here we've got fatsia polycarpa fatsia polycarpa has got a matte finish to the leaves whereas japonica they're very glossy and dark green i think they're both very interesting plants very striking but they're also very tough hardy and great plants for a shady spot too 
we'll head on through a little bit more. It's actually got quite dark now, to be fair. There's a lot of movement in the garden, even with a slight wind. I mean, just look at this vista here. It almost looks like some of the Cornish gardens, which to me are my favorite kind of garden in the country. Treba, Tremonier, those gardens that lead through woods down to the sea. They really are incredible things. And here, that vibe has definitely been captured. So we head through. You can see the predominant theme in this area is green. And whether that was intentional or whether it's a case of choosing plants that would thrive in this more shaded atmosphere, I really like the feeling of the place. Just the combination of all the greens, it makes it relaxing. I think sometimes it's easy to think what's colourful, how many flowers can I pack in the garden, but sometimes stripping it back, going to the ferns, going to the evergreens, it really creates a more naturalistic space. Lovely green colour those. And as we look back, you'll see, in fact, I really like that sort of stained glass window over there. It's a really nice touch. And in fact, there's quite a few parts of this garden that are packed full of personality. So here is an interesting bed that I wanted to talk about. When I talk about trees, I think one of the most striking trees you can grow is this, the Tibetan cherry, Prunus cerula. Now this one's definitely getting on a bit. It's a tree that's some age, and I just love the way that the usually glossy bark is starting to peel away. I think plants like this, they're not conventionally exotic, but they definitely fit that vibe. And if you went to an authentic jungle environment, I know that's a bit of a basic phrase, but you definitely see trees like this growing amongst the Trachycarpus and other exotics. I don't know if this Trachycarpus here is actually a different form. That's quite striking actually, the way the fronds or leaves actually go all the way around, making a full 360, so I'll definitely have to ask about that. It's definitely a stunner, that one. There's just so many roots around this garden. Even doing this video, I'll probably get lost. And I really like as well, all the little touches, the personality just dotted through it. So again there, we've got hydrangea right next to the tree fern. But to me, I love those little touches. And I think it's important if you want to create a genuine jungle garden to really grow the plants that you want to grow. Don't just see your garden as a way of ticking off a checklist of which tropical plants grow in the UK. Sure, grow the ones that you know will perform well for you, but then really push the boundaries, not just in terms of hardness, but in terms of what fits the style and grow the garden that you want to grow. So as we head through here, you'll see we've got more palms, a lovely little seating spot there. And there's just such a mixture. I think this is something that I really need to work on in my garden, or I want to over the coming years. It's that lower level planting. It's the smaller grasses, lilies, sedges. Here we've got hostas, geraniums, smaller bamboos, and it really just knits the whole garden together. Some lovely ferns dotted in here. And this is a very striking plant. This is an equisetum. Must admit, I don't know the exact variety, but they're very unusual plants. I believe they're a genuinely prehistoric plant, these. They certainly look it. They almost look like some kind of alien bamboo. Very unusual looking. And here, we've got an amazingly natural looking pond. Now, this is something I've talked about in a few of my videos, how having one plant really sets that exotic tone. So this area, it's a mixture of, shall we say, more conventional garden plants. You've got ferns that are readily available in most garden centres. We've got geraniums. We've got all kinds of climbing plants. The ivy there, laurels in the background. But to me, just having those specimen tree ferns dotted around, they really set the tone. It gives the whole place that exotic vibe even though a lot of the planting, very low maintenance, and certainly tough in our winters. Got an echium here, I believe that one's candycans, which is the shrub form. But I'm sure if I'm wrong, one of you will be able to point it out. And to you, they probably won't like me showing you this, but you can see there's new ferns gone in. 
And I think this is important. No matter how many years you're at your garden, there's always gonna be spaces presenting themselves and there's nothing wrong. In fact, I would actively encourage evolving your garden, changing things around. And if something doesn't work, choose something that does. A lot of the ferns you can get, the very tough, very strong growers and the great little gap fillers. I know my garden, Chris as well, we've generally gone full on for the exotic theme. Whereas the plant in here, it's certainly, to use Jane's word, an eclectic mixture of plants. And I think this area definitely sums that up. We've got Opipogon nigrescens there, the black lily grass. Over here, we've got dahlias. And in the background, we've got persicaria. We've got a Scheffler there, creating that lush canopy. There's just such a mixture of plants. Plants that in theory thrive in all kinds of different conditions, but here, they all manage under the shelter and a bit of the shade from these large mature trees. And I think again, it just shows that you can create an exotic jungle look without necessarily planting purely exotics, purely tropical style plants. And here, even roses mixed in with the formiums, the cordylines, they all knit together and create a lush garden with real personality. And on that note, I want to take you through here. This is the not so secret garden. <laughs> This was actually created this year when they removed the laurel and there's some really interesting planting ideas. So like myself, they're a fan of nasturtiums. I love just pushing the seeds into the ground around May time. They fill up a gap nicely, grow really quickly, provide lovely little jewels of colour and then you can get rid of them at the end of the year. No overwintering required. And also fitting that note are these riciness. It's been a very hot year this year but with some extra watering, just look how big they can get. They're definitely cool plants. And on this side, there's a really interesting mix. We've got Scheffler or Delave there. We've got grasses at the back. We've got Barinda papyri for a bamboo there. Then we've got Fatia japonica. We've got Musa, that'll be a Sycamensis there. More rice than started in. They've definitely really gone full on experimental and put all kinds of plants in. And I think it's something that I try to do in my garden as well. I spoke with Jane about the idea of overplanting. I know if I planted up this area in one of my videos, a lot of you would say there's too many plants in there, they're all packed in. But this is something that both myself, Jane and Ellen do, is actively overplant. What you find is some plants do really well. Ah, uh, chef over there, that looks like it's really settling in. That plant will stay there. Other plants, like the grasses, you might find that they need maybe more sun. So those can easily be dug up, moved to another spot in the garden, divided, juggled around. It won't hurt them at all. So I think when you plant up an area, don't just try to plant it for this summer. Go over the top to really build the effect for now. Think ahead and don't be afraid to change things. I know this is a very young garden, but I can definitely see the direction it's taken and I'm sure it'll look even more incredible next year. But let's head through and look at some of the real striking beauties here. Some very unexpected plants. You might associate hydrangeas then with a cottage style garden, aces with a more Japanese style. But if we head through here, you'll see something truly unexpected. And it's over there. Next is Avery. All these beautiful birds in. We've got the most stunning agave americana. Now this agave, it's not the hardiest agave and it's certainly not the most moisture tolerant. But grown here outside in North Lincolnshire, this one only receives overhead cover in winter, a bit of plastic over the top of it, and that's enough to get it through our winters. And just look at the monstrous size of it. This one is definitely over two meters across and I just love that incredibly alien appearance it's got. To me, this area, it definitely sums up the different options for creating a desert or arid style garden here in the UK. And I think you can stick with really tough exotics like this Yucca Gloriosa variegata or the more conventional bluey green Yucca Gloriosa there. And those definitely capture the same kind of vibe. Very tough plants, very hardy. You won't need to do anything to look after them other than maybe remove the old leaves. Definitely wear gloves for that. Or you can be a bit more experimental and try agaves. This Americana, they definitely get tougher when they get bigger. And if you want an even more winter tolerant agave, I'd probably try Montana, Parii, or Avatifolia. 
or if you're willing to go full and experimental, you can even bring cacti like this outside, whether potted or planted out for summer, they certainly give the garden that surreal kind of feel. I just love this mixture and it's really unexpected here in North Lincolnshire under the shade of a large holly tree. You wouldn't expect them to thrive, but with the heat we've had this summer, they definitely have. Got a lovely yucca there. Again, you'll see the same strong evergreen backdrop here. We've got the Trachycarpus fortunii there. Over there, we've got a low quart and behind a huge great big formium. So the whole garden, no matter how experimental or eclectic, it's definitely based on that strong mixture of the evergreen exotics that I definitely value. So you've seen the lower maintenance, more naturalistic jungle part of the garden. It's time now to switch things up and show you some of those incredible potted plants here. We've got carnivorous plants here, Saracenia from North America. And then we've got Echeverias. We've got Sempervivums or Sempervivums, never know how to pronounce those. There's pretty much every kind of exotic plant here. And it's the way they're presented with such personality, color and vibrancy that I really love. So we've got dahlias there, that bright red shown off well with a Dixonia tree fern behind it. We've got a Salvia Amistad there, bobbing around in the September breeze. But to me, it's some of these little displays that really give the garden character. We've got all kinds of succulents here. And just look in there, got an Echeveria in the middle, full of uh, hens and chicks around it. We've got banana plants like this, well, Musella lesiocarpa, which has an amazing yellow flower when it gets bigger. It's an incredible mixture of plants here. Some I know, like the Aeonium there, the Mangavi at the back, and some I can only guess at. And I think one of the most amazing little displays is this here. The Auricula Theatre is full of aloes. Some beautiful varieties here. I just love the colours and textures of them all. And I think just walking around, it's very clear that this is a garden owned, made and evolved by two passionate plants people. There's just such a variety of plants. Got cacti, yuccas. I think this greenhouse is full of propagation. Whereas this one in here, there's definitely more ornamental plants in here. Just look at some of these. We've got Impatiens, we've got an Insetti, pretty much hitting the roof there. We've got a Colocasia at the back. And this greenhouse, well technically it's actually a conservatory, it's actually used for overwintering. But in the summer, they still use it for display. The amount of effort that must go into this garden, it really is incredible. We've got tubular heaters there that they use for overwintering, just ticking over. They're definitely a good option if you just need to keep something just above freezing. And like these tender plants, I imagine they grow really well in here for the summer. I mean, for example, look at the Ensetti. Touching the roof, bending over, reaching out for more sun. We've got some tropical bromeliads there. We've got begonias, more bananas. We've got an alocasia there at the back. Colocasia there, one of the black ones. We've got hardy begonias, more tender begonias, even some conventional house plants there. And I just love how the planting carries over from that to this real outdoor sitting area. It must be amazing here, the scent of that honeysuckle, just relaxing on an evening. So many lovely plants. There's some lovely green plants, but to me, some of the most stunning plants in this area are actually these. These bulbs are Eucomis sparkling burgundy. Mine never flowered very well. I know Chris has also had the same issue with his, but these are real showstoppers. Just look at the intricacy of those flowers there. Really lovely things. And here, they've definitely carried that strong red purple color scheme through with all the different begonias, Eucomis there, picked up by the Ansetti leaves, the purple cord line back there. It really is a lovely bit of lush, tropical style planting. There simply isn't the time to show you all the amazing plants in this garden. But I think as a garden and a display, it really sums up the tropical style of gardening. 
grow an exotics, it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be high maintenance, low maintenance, and everything in between. If you really want to push your boat out and grow botanical rarities, then tender, unusual exotics, like the Ansetti, Ventricosa, Morellii, Brugmantia up there, the Cyathea tree fern behind it, they definitely need somewhere to overwinter, somewhere warmer, but they're certainly worth the effort. If you enjoy growing something more structural, unusual, then you can have a potted collection of agaves, aeoniums, there's just so many unusual succulents, which as long as you've got somewhere dry and frost free to keep them in winter, they'll definitely grow strong, certainly if the summers keep going like this. Or you can have a garden that's definitely lower maintenance, but with all the impact. Here, this beautiful white birch provides a beautiful contrast against the lush green fronds of this Dixonia Antarctica. This is a plant that whilst it can need some winter protection, I've done videos all about it, in a lot of city locations, especially if you live on the south coast, doesn't really need much at all, other than maybe some straw in the crown. We've got Euphorbia there, I believe that's mellifera, very tough, very jungly, another exotic that's very easy to grow. And this section here, this really sums up what I'd call the lower maintenance side, the really tough evergreen exotics, but those that grow really well here in the UK. Cordyline Australis, doesn't need a lot of care, very adaptable, and as we've seen in the jungle garden, they look good while they're small, but they look great when they get bigger, and they don't hang around either, they get there pretty quickly. Here, there's plants like Astelia, and the formiums, very tough choices, and definitely complement the other exotics. And as we pass through there, you'll see just how big some of these formiums get. They look fantastic with the trachycarpus. And in fact, I think this mixture of plants here is what I'd recommend if you don't have the time to overwinter plants. If you don't necessarily want to be bringing plants into your house in winter or wrapping things up, then you can't go far wrong with formiums, with trachycarpus, with euphorbia, and with the cordylines. They really are a great way of capturing that exotic jungle vibe without needing to look after everything and really worry about your plants in winter. So I think this garden's a great lesson. And for me, the things that I take away from it are, you really want to have these strong structural exotics forming the basis of your garden. They let you have a big garden that doesn't need loads of care, and they really set the tone even in winter. Then the second lesson I think is really don't be afraid to experiment. Just because a plant doesn't technically thrive in your location, it doesn't mean you can't try it. Simply raising things up or giving them some overhead cover in winter, it massively expands your options. And here that Gavi is definitely proof that you really can grow the unexpected. And I think thirdly, probably the key thing I take from this garden, it's all about personality. Your garden can be whatever you want it to be. If you like your foliage plants, have foliage plants. If you enjoy your flowers more, grow flowers. And if you enjoy a beautiful mixture of them all like this garden here, where we've got grasses, we've got honeysuckle, we've got climbers, we've got every kind of plant you can imagine. If this is your idea of paradise, it's definitely possible here in the UK and with less maintenance than you might expect. So massive thank you to Jane Allen for the little walk around the garden. Apologies for my rambling, but I really wanted to share some of this incredible planting with you. Hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.